Let's listen to James Battelle for just a few seconds because this is exactly what I'll be talking about in this video. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. James is quoting from 1 John chapter 4 on how to test the spirits. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Those are the very specific words God has given us to test the spirits. But let's listen for a few seconds more. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Well, if you have heard that, it should come. And even now already is it in the world. So basically, if you want to test someone, try someone else, just ask them, do they confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? They could lie to when James quoted earlier, directly out of the King James Bible, he quoted, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. In the very next breath, when James recalls from memory that very same verse, he quoted, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Why did James change that one word out of the very vital test that God has given us to test the spirits? I'm just going to mark that up as sloppy handling of God's word, perhaps, because this is not really a rebuke video to James. I like James. I listen to his stuff. But let's uh, go right to the King James Bible. Okay, Brother James was quoting from 1 John chapter 4, how to test the spirits. And in verse 2, it states, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Notice the wording, is come in the flesh. That's present tense. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. It's a very simple yet very effective test. And it's even repeated in verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. So we can reveal the very spirit of Antichrist by applying this very simple test according to the King James Bible. And further on, it states, Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So this test can reveal also the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And it's even repeated in 2 John, verse 7, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. So if someone comes along and does not confess Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, that individual is a deceiver and he has the spirit of antichrist. Very harsh, very severe, but this is how we test the spirits according to God. He has given us his words. I have here several Vatican-approved Alexandrian perversions. Let's test the spirits of these Bible perversions and those that teach out of them. So we'll move the King James aside. Okay, first up we have the ESV, the English Standard Version, a very popular version. Some of the celebrity pastors that use the ESV, John MacArthur, John Piper, James McDonald, Tim Conway, and many others, of course. But 
when John MacArthur opens his mouth and quotes from the ESV and says, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He fails a test. This should say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And it should state it again. But they delete a lot of the words. It just says Jesus. Confess Jesus is not of God. So they've eliminated a bunch of the words of the test and added a word or two to the test. Corrupting and perverting the very test that we're supposed to use. The ESV and those who teach from it fail. They have an antichrist spirit or a spirit of error about them and must be completely rejected. That's the ESV. Up next we have the NLT, the New Living Translation. And what celebrity pastor uses the NLT? Well, Chuck Swindoll comes to mind. So when Chuck opens his mouth and says, Jesus Christ came in a real body. He fails the test. Chuck Swindoll and the NLT fail the test. The very test that we're supposed to apply to test the spirits, these guys have changed the wording of the test. And then it goes on to say, does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus. No, it's supposed to say, does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. So an epic, epic fail, spirit of the Antichrist revealed. When it comes to Chuck and the NLT, you don't have to listen to it. Reject it as the spirit of error. Okay, how about the ever popular NIV? Is there a pastor, celebrity pastor, that seriously studies and teaches out of the NIV? Well, a couple come to mind. Hank Hanegraaff, David Jeremiah. So when someone like David Jeremiah opens his NIV and states, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Fail. They fail the test on how to reveal and discern spirits. It should say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They've changed the very words of the test. And in the second part, uh, that does not acknowledge Jesus is not of God. So they've eliminated all the words of the second part, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, and just said Jesus. Another epic fail. Spirit of error or the spirit of Antichrist revealed in the NIV and those who preach and teach out of it. This is exactly how Satan works in all, all his subtlety. Just changing a word or two, thereby destroying the very test on testing the spirits. Another epic fail, NIV. Okay, how about the New World Translation by the Jehovah's Witnesses? Let's see what they say. Every inspired expression, that's supposed to be spirit by the way, Every inspired expression that confesses Jesus Christ as... See how much they've changed, they've added Jesus Christ having come in the flesh. So they do say come in the flesh, but they've changed virtually everything else. And in the second part here, does not confess Jesus. So they've eliminated all the words, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They have changed virtually every single word, added words, diminished aught, another spirit revealed here. This is the Antichrist's inspired expression, or spirit. 
revealed. The New World Translation, the same spirit of error as all these ever popular Alexandrian perversions. And the funny thing is, the Catholic Alexandrian system points to the Jehovah's Witnesses and their Bible perversion as being exceedingly corrupt. But the entire Alexandrian Catholic system is exceedingly corrupt themselves with a spirit of error. They have no business critiquing the New World Translation and the Jehovah's Witnesses because they are in the same spiritual group. That spirit of error, that spirit of Antichrist. It's crazy. Okay, let's look at one more, the new King James, the most deceptive of the perversions. Uh, the new King James, they should have it right, right? Because all they did really was eliminate the these and the thous and the archaic language. So they have the test all right and good. Well, let's take a look, let's test it. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Fail. Jesus Christ has, past tense, come in the flesh. It should be Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. See how subtle that is? Just see how subtle Satan works. Satan is not obvious. He's not in your face, but he works in all his subtlety. Just as the serpent beguiled Eve in all his subtlety, so many people are being deceived and receiving that spirit of error. Because the New King James is very popular. And what celebrity pastors come to mind that use the New King James? Well, John Hagee comes to mind. Ray Comfort. So when Hagee and Comfort declare Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Fail. Spirit of error revealed. Or it could be the spirit of Antichrist. Either way, fail. The New King James is completely, completely perverted. It's not a New King James. It is one of the many perversions that are used by the Catholic Alexandrian system, which is another spirit, another gospel, and another Jesus Christ. Not to be confused with the King James Bible, the words that God has given us. And with these Bibles, we can test all of them. We can go right down the line. For instance, the New American Standard Version, the NASB. What celebrity pastors use that? Charles Stanley, Paul Washer. So when Stanley and Washer open their NASB and declare that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you've revealed that spirit of error according to the King James Bible. It's a very simple test that we can apply to any one of these Bible versions. And those who teach and preach out of them, we can test them to determine whether they are of the spirit of truth or the spirit of error. Thanks for listening.